Hello, the purpose of this video is to determine the linearity and time invariance of a simple RC circuit. Uh, the reason for using this example, one, is that it's hopefully quite instructive in terms of uh, both circuit analysis and uh, concepts like linearity and such, and it introduces issues that you need to think about when your system model is defined in terms of a differential equation. So what we'll do is we're f we'll first actually derive that differential equation, and then we'll uh, go through a couple of different uh, outcomes or possible uh, behaviors of the circuit, and uh, see what that implies about linearity and time invariance. The first thing we'll do is mark our capacitor here as having a capacitance of C. Um, so to get the uh, a differential equation that describes, well, let me back up. The input to this circuit, x of t, is the voltage at this source. Uh, so uh, basically the voltage across here, plus or minus. The output of the circuit is the voltage across the capacitor. So that's uh, the way we have this set up. Um, typically in circuit analysis, you'd see the input uh, described something as V and the output may be V sub S and the output V sub C. But since we're interested in looking at this from a systems perspective, uh, we're going to call the input voltage X and the output voltage Y. And again, the output voltage is the voltage across the capacitor. So to find the differential equation that describes the voltage across the capacitor, we're going to introduce the current that's flowing around this loop. Uh, the R, the C, and the voltage source are in series, so any current that flows through one flows through all. We'll label this current I of T. And then we can find out what I of, we can get an expression for I of T flowing through the resistor. That's the voltage across the resistor, which would be X of T minus Y of T. So the voltage across the resistor divided by the resistance. We can also uh, say I of t is the current flowing through the capacitor. And uh, you'll remember that current flowing through a capacitor is the capacitance times the derivative of the voltage across the capacitor. And this derivative is what's going to give us our differential equation. So now we can set um, uh, both of these expressions for I of t equal to each other. And we get that x of t minus y of t over r is equal to c dy dt. Okay, and now we can tidy this up a little bit, uh, which we do in order to put it in a form that's uh, uh, more typical, I guess, that we're used to seeing. We'll take this C and move it down here, and then we'll do some algebra to get the final equation, which is dy dt is equal to, oh, I didn't want to do that. We'll do this instead, OK? Plus 1 over rc y of t is equal to 1 over rc x of t. OK, so this is a differential equation that describes the relationship between the source voltage, this guy, and the capacitor voltage, this guy. OK, and the actual solution for y of t, the, the actual waveform that we get for y of t, depends both on the input that we have and on the initial capacitor voltage. And so I'm going to go through a couple of examples that are um, mathematically correct, although I'm not going to do any of the math, 
just to show you uh, conceptually what happens. So I'll eliminate our derivation of the differential equation. And uh, we'll start with an example. Suppose that um, I put, let's see, what's a good color for the source waveform? Okay, so suppose that my source waveform x of t is going to be a unit step function that starts at 0 and goes up at time 0 goes up to a value of 1. Okay, and um, if we, well, let me back up just a second. Uh, how can we tell if the system's linear or not? Well, we have to make sure that it satisfies the conditions of homogeneity and additivity. So first we'll look at homogeneity. If I take my input and multiply it by some value, does that also change the output? So if I have an input that looks like this x of t, the output y of t is going to look something like this. The capacitor will start charging at time 0, assuming it's discharged, and asymptotically its voltage will approach a value of 1 volt. Okay, now this assumes that y of 0 is equal to 0 volts. Okay, because we're assuming that the initial voltage of the capacitor is 0 here. If I take my input and multiply it by, say, a factor of 2, so this would be 2x of t, it's going to look like this. And my output, in response to this input that's been made larger, will look something like this, where it goes up twice as far and asymptotically approaches 2 volts. Okay, so you can see that if I take my input and double it, that my output also doubles under the assumption that the initial condition here is 0 volts. Okay, let's see what it would look like if my initial condition, uh, let's see, I'll do something in shocking pink here. Suppose my initial condition is 2 volts. Okay, well, for the step function that uh, starts at or 0 until time 0 and then goes up to a value of 1, this guy up here, now my initial capacitor voltage is 2 volts. And so what's going to happen is the capacitor is actually going to discharge and asymptotically approach a value of 1 volt. Okay. On the second case, when I have a unit step function that has a value of 2, if my initial capacitor voltage is 2 volts, then it just stays at 2 volts. Okay, the capacitor neither charges nor discharges because um, it's got a voltage of 2 volts across it. So what you can see is in this case, my system acts like it's linear, or at least it acts like it satisfies homogeneity, because when I put 1 volt in, I get this increasing exponential, that it goes to a steady state of 1 volt. When I multiply that by 2 and put 2 volts in, I get an increasing exponential that starts at 0 and goes up to 2 volts. So um, indeed I have that homogeneity holds. But when the initial conditions are not 0, so when I've got this uh, funny guy over here, so the initial charge on my capacitor is 2 volts, then if I uh, put in a 1 volt source, I discharge towards 1 volt. If I put in a 2 volt source, I just stay at 2 volts. So uh, this graph 
is not twice, or I'm sorry, this graph is not twice this graph. So as long as the initial condition on this circuit, and again the initial condition is the capacitor voltage is zero, then um, my system is linear. If the initial condition, that is the capacitor voltage, is not zero, then my system is not linear. Okay. Well, actually, I should I can't say yet that it's linear. It it satisfies homogeneity. So in this case, it satisfies homogeneity. In this case, it doesn't satisfy homogeneity. Okay. Um, and uh, well, this video is already going longer than I had expected it to. Uh, we'll stop here and have part two.